It's time. This video is sponsored by Samsung Canada. If you still haven't heard of their lifestyle screens, you're in for a huge surprise. The living room was one of the first places that we've made over. It is the place that we spend a lot of the time in, and I think it meets the minimum of what we're looking for in a living room, but it's missing quite a lot of personality and a lot of function. <sighs> I'm going to be doing a living room refresh and also a DIY with newly acquired woodworking skills <laughs> to make a behind the sofa table. More terrifying than having to build a couch table with a limited amount of wood and I have like no margin of error there is committing to hanging art. The living room is very plain. It doesn't say too much about ourselves and the rug is really what makes the biggest statement, but I think the wall needs to match the rug and the energy of the room. I can't tell you why I picked these art prints. There's nothing, I can't say, I can't explain, there is no meaning. Look how funny this one is. Cool, right? I'm gonna lay out this gallery wall on the floor first, map it out, see if I like it before putting it on the wall. shown them to you and I've had them for weeks. <laughs> well, I can't tell you why for any of them, really. <laughs> but there is one made for you. This one's for you! That's very cool. <laughs> oh, spider! Do you see it? Right, right there. <laughs> I don't mind spiders, but you didn't have to drop in like that. Lots of people ask me where I got this painting from. And this is actually from Stefan's late grandmother. Her name was Lorraine, and she would paint all her grandkids something, and she would always put a quote. They would just sit at her place and talk science for hours. Yes? <gasps> it worked! Ah! Brilliant! I have a hot tip for you. If you're looking to hang your gallery wall and you need something to anchor to, very easily, actually, well, it's easier if your frame is flush with the back. Take a little bit of sticky tack, very lightly stick it where your nail goes, very lightly. Then onto your wall, press in. And now you know exactly where your nail needs to go. You don't need to trace, you don't need to make paper cutouts. I'm gonna anchor with my biggest piece first, level it off, then go from there. We're also replacing our old TV to the frame. This is Samsung's iconic model. And I don't mean to fool you, but behind me is not a real art print. This is actually the TV itself. The frame is adaptable to any lighting situation. It has a matte display that you can enjoy whatever is on the screen and feel the texture of the art the way it's meant to be. You can enjoy the art as art and the TV as a TV. The frame's minimalist design blends flawlessly with your interior, complementing your personal aesthetic. You can customize your space to suit your style with a variety of optional bezel colors on the frame. The slim fit wall mount brings the frame flush against the wall if you choose to hang it on the wall, or it comes with a height adjustable stand. Steph is extremely particular about eye level with the TV. For a tall person, you'd think he'd appreciate height. Steph had mounted our old TV onto this adjustable wall mount that pivots, but it hangs like a full 10 inches away from the wall. It also was ever so slightly off level. When we had the frame installed, I was, I just don't even, I tried to pay attention to what the installers were doing. And now I have all this real estate on the media unit so I could put decor on it and not actually have the TV in the way. The soundbar is also the perfect accompaniment to the frame. I know that there are tons of ideas out there that, you know, cover up the TV or hide it when you're not in use. But if you're a TV person like me, there's no point. You will always need your TV out there. So to have your TV become the art and the decor of the room is just, 
It's revolutionary thinking. I'm sitting on the couch, I'm watching TV, I'm leaned back. This is how we usually sit. Let's let's call it sitting, but it's not. And I have my bottle. I took a sip, you know, I'm enjoying myself. Uh, coffee table is here. That's a lot of core strength. So instead, what if I had something here? Usually I end up wedging it right here. Also, this outlet, it's in a very visual place in the living room. Any time, any position you're standing in the living room, you see it. And usually it comes with a jumble of cables because we need to charge things all the time. Two main issues that we need to tackle. This needs to be fixed. All right, for this behind the sofa table, although the idea is for this to be hidden, I still want it to look nice and I get to practice what I learned in class. And now's as good a time as any to tell you that I took up a woodworking course every Saturday morning and it's been amazing. Here I have a one by six. Thought I bought a two by six, but like I said, I'm in class. My table is custom fitted to my sofa and it'll have a top with four legs that I'm attaching with pocket holes. Lumber is expensive right now, so you can just make a shelf and use brackets to attach it behind your sofa, but there are a few extra special elements I'm adding to this, so I'm making legs. For the tabletop, I got really lucky and was allowed to use the router table in class to round off the edges. This is very optional, just more of an excuse for me to practice. One extra special element is I'm going to be making a hidden charging storage box. I was worried about it being too thin on the sides, but a test piece proved to be quite solid, so onward I went, with a drill and a jigsaw to cut out a rough hole before sanding and sanding and sanding. I tried to clean up the ends, but my chisels are not sharp whatsoever. So more sanding. This was what it used to be, and this is what it is now. <laughs> These were like support pieces for the cabinet. I make the box. If I cut it right, I'll have enough wood. <laughs> and then this sheet will be the bottom. Oh. Oh. Go first. <laughs> Missed a step. I need a way to attach these onto the tabletop, so I have to pocket hole these first, which I did not do. <laughs> I have this tabletop socket with USB ports that I'll link. I traced it onto the MDF base of the box before cutting to size. Luckily, it doesn't need to be perfect to drop right in. Then, brad nail happy all over the box frame to attach. I traced out the size I needed on my pine and used a hole saw first to cut out the finger pole. That way you have the support of the board and then you can cut out the rest of your lid. The finger pole is a semicircle, which is why I wanted to cut it out with the hole saw first. Then I began sanding and I sanded for hours constantly checking and sanding and checking until I looked up and it was nighttime. A final sand all over before I stain. Pine is so soft that it's not easy to stain evenly, so I kept it simple with a whitewash and then two clear coats the next day. Then for assembly, Steph was in office that day and I'm both stubbornly independent and stubbornly excited, so I stubbornly put it all together and lifted it up to install behind the sofa. Though granted, it's not that heavy. Goodbye!
Lessons learned, I didn't account for a tiny gap between the two sofas and I was aware of the space behind the arm, but the solution now will be to block off those areas so that I don't drop things behind it. But wow, I, I can't believe I did that. Samsung is leading the way in design for home products if you've seen my kitchen reno series and in this instance the TVs. You can check out the link in my description to see the full lineup of Samsung's lifestyle screens.